What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So today, uh, we're going to replace the controller in a hot e-bike. Now, uh, this bike and one of my other bikes started to have a problem. Uh, in this particular one, the throttle stopped working, and then the, um, the, the bike was shut off uh, roughly at about 46 volts or 47 volts when really it should, uh, you know, drain the battery down to about 40 volts. So there was a couple of problems with this one. And uh, the other one also had a similar problem where it was registering the battery, uh, but it wasn't sending any power to the motor. So we had decided that it was best to uh, replace the controller. I have it right here. Uh, this was sent to me from Hardy Bike. It was custom made with the pigtails uh, properly at the proper length, and uh, we're gonna install it. Now, this this one is not for this particular hot e-bike. It's for that one, okay, the fat bike. Now, I've already got it halfway taken apart, so in order for me to show you actually what it takes to put this controller in, I'm gonna pull the battery off of that one and show you basically what it looks like when you first take it apart, and then we'll proceed to this bike to install the new controller. So let's dive into this. Okay, so the first thing that you'll notice when working on a hot e-bike is that you can't see the controller. It's hidden. Normally, in a lot of bikes, you'd see the controller mounted down here, you know, back behind the seat post down in this area, or you might see one down in this area here. But in the case of a hot e-bike, the controller is hidden. It's up in this area here. So when you take the battery off, uh, you can get up in there and see where the controller is. So let me show you that now. Okay, so once you got the key, it's hard to do this one-handed, but once you turn the key and get this loose, you pull the battery out, like so. All right, the battery just comes right out. Okay, so with the battery removed, you'll see in this case, the battery terminals are here, uh, two positives and two negatives. There's two screws, one here, one here, and it pulls this locking piece out, okay? And then the controller slides out from in here, You'll see the wires are tucked in this little channel here along along the bottom of this kind of box type uh, post, how they got this bike constructed. And then there's another kind of plastic piece covering back here and behind here or the other connections that, uh, you know, send power to your control, you know, to your display and to your motor and uh, some other things, some lights back here, some wires for the, for the lights. And that's how uh, this hot e-bike is basically constructed, right? So I'm not gonna take this one apart any further. I'm just gonna take you over to this one and show you. I've got the, the connector out and the controller is tucked away in here, right? Just kind of pull that out. And there she is. And that's one of the nice things about a hot e-bike is that the, the controller is hidden, the bike is, very well constructed so that you don't actually see the controller. In the case of the mountain bike, you know, it doesn't even look like an e-bike. You have to look kind of close because it doesn't look much like an e-bike. This one's got a large battery in it. And um, so you can clearly see it's an e-bike. But from here, it's easy. You just take these connectors off, right? Unplug everything. Unplug these connectors down here. Drop the new controller in and put it back in place. So let's get to it. Okay, so it's really easy to take these off, guys. You can see in here, you just press in on this, pull that one out. Same thing in the case of that one. You can see that. Just press in and then pull them apart. And then there's a couple others here. They all come apart the same way, all right? Just press in on the one little tab there and it should come out. It's just a little tough to do this one-handed, so let me put this camera down and I'm gonna disconnect them all. Okay, so with most of the small connectors disconnected, okay, they were, they were a, a snap to take them off. Uh, these, the high-powered wires that power up the motor, well, they're connected a little bit different. Okay, they've got a connection that looks like this, right? So I gotta get some tools and pull them apart. And then uh, this, you see the way to come with this kind of a cellophane type tape on it. Don't know exactly what kind of tape that is, but uh, we'll try to figure something out there. So let me get some tools, we'll take this one apart. Okay, so this little nut right here has to come off. 
and it's an eight millimeter. Uh, I really don't have what it takes to show you this, to take this apart with one hand. So uh, I'm just gonna take these apart right here and then pull this old controller out. Like I say, guys, um, I don't know what kind of tape this is right here, but uh, you can see I got the other two taken off already, one here and one here. Uh, it's really nothing. You put an eight, milli eight millimeter wrench or socket on that, you know, with a Phillips head on that side, right? So uh, we'll just take the tape off of this one, disconnect that, disconnect this yellow wire, and then uh, we'll pull the controller out. Okay, with these three power wires disconnected, we can pull the controller right out. Okay, so it's at this point, generally when I'm replacing something, I will put the uh, old part next to the new part to make sure that what I'm replacing is the same as what I'm taking out, right? Now, this one here is the old one, and here's the new one. Uh, I've checked all the lengths, I've checked all the connectors, and they're all the same, but there is one difference. This one, I don't know if that's something that you can see, but um, the new one says max current 17 plus or minus one amp, and the old one is 18 plus or minus one amp. I don't know if that's gonna make any difference in the performance of the bike. Um, Hadi Bike says it should perform about the same, you know, um, so I'm just gonna go with it. I also wanna say that um, this new controller was ordered directly from Hot E-Bike, and um, they were actually pretty good. I mean, here I am in the United States, and uh, I had to email them from China. I took all the measurements because those long pigtails are 61 millimeters from the controller, and they custom made this one to the exact specifications that I gave them, so. It took a while, it took about um, 10 days for them to build it and another 12 days for it to get here, but it's here and everything looks okay, so we're gonna put it in. Okay, at this point, this is actually quite simple. Just lay this one in here, lay the controller in there, set these two wires to the side because they lay on top of the controller like that, right? And we'll hook up the proper ones, we'll slip the controller in there. Then I'm gonna do the high powered wires first to make sure that all works. And then we'll plug in the rest of them. Okay, so we're almost there now. Uh, you can see these little, three little um, connectors. Uh, I got all of them together with the little nuts and bolts. All right, so we're just gonna put a little electrical tape on them, all right, to keep them safe. And then uh, we have these ones up in here. Now this red one here is the power, main power wire for the battery, which connects down here once we put the battery on. These three little black ones, they also connect up in there too, but you have to be a little careful with them because even though you, know, you can't plug in the wrong one, uh, it's easy to try to mix them up and then damage them as you're realizing that you've got the wrong ones there. So um, I would advise just being real careful with these guys as you put them in, make sure you got the right ones matched up and then plug them in and uh, we should be all hooked up here. Okay, so it is very important to watch these two connections right here because they will interchange. So in my case, I did have them wrong. Uh, I reached out to Hot E-Bike because at first everything didn't work and they spotted it. Uh, so you gotta watch to make sure that the, you know, the, the wires are, are matching before you put these two together because you can mix them up. The, the connections are the same. So if you cross them, it won't work. But right now we have everything right, everything's on and everything is working. I'll hit the throttle and we have power there. And we also have, see the brake lights work and we also have cadence. See that? So everything's working perfectly. Excellent. All right, so with everything hooked up, right? Uh, you got a lot of wires here to work with. So basically in this case now you gotta tuck as much of this wire down in this direction and up in here because there's a lot of space up in the top part to get this tucked away so that uh, we can put these end caps on and then we can slip the battery in. So let's get to it. So with the bottom plate on now, these wires all have to be tucked in this channel, right? And then tucked up in here and then this plate goes on 
And you can see the terminals for the battery there. Uh, on this bike, those terminals are not used because the battery hooks up to a pigtail down here. All right, so even though that they're there, they don't work, they're dead. There's nothing to that. So we'll stretch these wires out, get them in the channel nice and tight, and uh, get this piece on. And at that point, we're ready to put the battery on. One interesting thing happened here, guys, uh, from tugging on all the wires while, you know, um, maneuvering the new controller in, somehow it pulled on all of this, all through these zip ties, and disconnected one of the connections here on the, on the uh, front display. So when you're doing a job like this and uh, you're ready to go, you think you got everything hooked up and it doesn't work, check stuff that you didn't even touch because I never touched any of this. And uh, I just by chance came over here and looked at it and found that this was disconnected. So I'm gonna have to pull this up a little bit to get this to connect because see, it won't even connect. That's why it's, it's been pulled through a little bit and just got disconnected. So anything can happen when doing a job like this. All right, that should just about do it. Just lay a piece of tape on top of the wires to protect them. All right, and we're all hooked up now. Uh, you can see this, like I say, these terminals are not used, but this is basically here to lock the battery in, you know, with its lock. All the wires are protected in that channel. Everything's closed up. Let's put the battery on. All right, guys, here's our battery. And this is really hard to do one-handed, so uh, you can see the pigtail from the battery there. It cooks up over there. You just kind of lay the back of the battery in and then notch it in over there. I can't do this one-handed, so let me shut this camera off and drop this battery in. All right, there she is. We should just snap this right in. Okay, now that we're all hooked up, let's see how everything works. And there you have it. Everything looks good. Our battery voltage is at 53.8 volts. That's about right for a 48 volt system. And uh, we're good to go. Uh, I have nothing but good things to say about Heidi bike. Uh, sometimes things go wrong with the bikes. You just never know. But uh, they helped me diagnose the problem. Uh, we narrowed it down to the controller. Took a little while, but I got a controller. A couple hours worth of work. We got it all set up and we're ready to ride the bike again. I'd also like to note that if you look at this hot e-bike, right? These are 70 millimeter rims here, right? And they enable me to run a three inch tire. And I kind of like that. I like the bike look nice. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, pay attention to the channel here. I got a lot going on. Uh, we do e-bike content. We do a lot of different content. My wired freedom bike here, has a problem, right? Look at that. I got a flat tire. That's the second time that that's happened. Now these um, tires that I have on here are three and a half inch V-Tire Speedsters. They did a lot for this bike. Uh, I ride it mostly on pavement and uh, very low noise and very low rolling resistance. The only problem is these tires are very thin because they're very light and they're very prone to getting a flat. This isn't even a piece of metal. This is a piece of a tree or a shrub or something that I um, you know, ran over and it punctured the tire. So what I have is one of these inserts and a tube to match that, okay? And uh, we're gonna have a video on this one soon. So anyway, thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.